Well, I actually got the top off of this battery already. Man, what a fight that was. Um, I'd like to backtrack a little bit though. I'm gonna show you guys what I found in the penthouse. So the penthouse on this battery is essentially a redesign from the 2170 pack. They do share a lot of the same components, layouts done a little bit differently. So I'm gonna go through that and, and highlight uh, what I found in, in the new penthouse. So Tesla still uses their own special fastener to hold the lid down on this penthouse. Um, and again, that's done for a very specific reason. You shouldn't be in there. There's no reason for anybody to be inside this penthouse. Um, there is very high voltage, again, peak voltage around 400 volts DC. There is no reason for you to be in there. Um, so I'm gonna show you what's in there hopefully in an effort to satisfy your curiosity that there's no reason why you would ever be in there. Um, yeah, check it out. Penthouse is entirely different on this one. Same fasteners around the outside. This one has an access port. Presumably pyro fuse underneath that. Um, interestingly, integrated into the top one, this is the plug for the high voltage charger. This is part of the top penthouse. Uh, for comparison, I got a Model 3 one here. This is the typical penthouse, Model 3. This charge port was actually part of the battery top. So when you took off the penthouse cover, yeah, it took off the penthouse cover that would stay with the battery. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna find underneath here. Something's uh, maybe attached to that somehow. We'll investigate that further. Yeah, cover removed. That was indeed the location of the pyro fuse. So we'll see what's underneath this guy. So lots of similarities underneath here. This uh, charge port ended up just being a simple little retaining ring. Remove the retaining ring from the top and it came right off. High voltage contactors, uh, positive or negatives. Those are actually almost identical. This is a Model 3 high voltage contactor. Pretty much identical. Pyro fuse is the same. Actually found this uh, just rattling around in the bottom. That's supposed to be supposed to be on there. Same charger, same DC to DC converter. BMS looks similar. I'm going to do a quick little voltage check on it, see how charged this pack is, and then uh, I'm going to start stripping it down. Okay, so I got the charger removed, um, and this is what we're left with. Very similar battery architecture, it looks like. So what we have is battery positive post here, negative on this side coming up to the two contactors, and it does run the length of the pack comes back through this terminal, pokes up. That's our high voltage disconnect that splits the pack. Uh, pyro fuse. Back down through this side. And then pokes up at the positive contactor. So I did meter between that positive post contact and this half pack. I got about 186 volts DC, so uh, relatively Relatively high charge in this pack still. I don't see any BMS connections going through. I'm not sure where the, where the BMS picks up yet, but that'll be the next step. Figure out the BMS connections and then uh, we can start 
trying to get the top off of this thing. Well, I gotta give it to him. What a way better design than the Model 3. That's the four studs poking up from the battery. That was the BMS connection. Very simple, little two wire, easy to access. Curious to see what's underneath that, but that was the connection for the BMS coming up to the penthouse. The penthouse stripped out. There's the charger lying there. New cooling header that just snaps into place with that, real slick. That is the entire assembly for the penthouse. It all comes out in one shot. This is a much better design than the other one. I know none of this is considered serviceable anyway, but uh, they certainly made it much more serviceable. So I appreciate that. So if you've never seen a pyro fuse, that high voltage disconnect that I was talking about, um, I got a blown one here. I'll, I'll give you an example of this. So buried inside that pack is this high voltage disconnect. Here you can see the connection for the pyro that's inside of it. This is just a big bus bar across. So buried inside this thing, take this apart. What you'll see is when the pyro blows, it fires this ramp up and what it does is it splits this bus bar and you can see it punctures this down um, and deep inside this there's a ratcheting mechanism that prevents this from ever re-engaging. So once this blows, it's stuck down there splits the pack essentially in half. So if in the accident somehow um, one of the contactors had seized on, or had welded on or something, when this blows, this physically splits the pack in half. So it's safe for any first responders. Um, yeah, very clever little device. So I did note that in the top of the penthouse, there is an access port to this. In the event it needed to be changed Instead of removing the entire cover, you just pop off the access port. What I would have liked to have seen is some sort of plastic flange around that just to isolate the top. You are to be using voltage safe composite tools for all of this, but you know, in the event that there was some sort of an isolation error or pack damage and you know, somebody gets in here with a regular chrome extension and contacts the side of it. Just, uh, just a little suggestion. Accidents do happen. So that's a pretty good overview on the new penthouse design for the 4680 pack. You know, recognizing my opinion doesn't really count for much, but I think they did a great job redesigning this. It is a much simpler penthouse, laid out a little bit nicer, uh, much more serviceable, even though it's not serviceable at all. Uh, I did mention I have the top off of this battery pack already. That was quite the job. Um, I got some neat footage on how I ended up actually getting the top off of this. So um, thanks for sticking with me on this journey. The next update I give you will be all battery related. We'll try to get uh, some of these cells out. Thanks.